Hey everybody, it's Party Lead. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo North. And it is so funny to think that in the relatively near future, not very near, but relatively near future, this will no longer just be a list of one. It's uh honestly it's kind of weird to think about. But let's uh let's let's talk about that later. Let's dive on into Elite Zoo North. And as we do, folks, just want to mention, as always, if you're enjoying this series. And you would like to see it continue please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below it makes a massive difference in what i do on the channel especially as a playthrough goes on for a particularly long time it lets me know that people are still interested it lets me know that i should keep something alive on the channel rather than setting it aside or slowing it down so please don't hesitate to keep letting me know uh and plus on top of that as always i do read through all the comments so whether you've got jokes or stories or insights or tips or what, whatever it might be, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below as well because I will read through them all. Even if you're watching this a month later, even if you're watching this in 2021, I might respond. I, you know what? Unless, unless I'm no longer active as a YouTuber, I should still be responding. I still reply to comments on videos from four years ago. Um... Anyway, uh, back on topic. The, uh, the plan with Planet Zoo right now in my head it's not set in stone but it's it's sort of what i'm thinking is we take this zoo uh until episode 100 and from episode 101 onwards we open up our next zoo in the franchise but now before you start to worry about like oh but i love this zoo i don't want to move on trust me same here <laughs> same here it's such it's it's such a it's a, it's a com it's a conversation i keep bringing up so often because i too love this zoo and i'm also having you know commitment issues uh the other way around typically you have a hard time getting committed and uh w w with stuff i'm having the the flip side where i don't want to uh to leave but uh, i saw an excellent suggestion in the comments and it's it's a couple things so first of all even when we open up our next zoo, it's not like we're going to abandon this one completely. Um, it's a franchise, after all. We're supposed to be taking care of multiple zoos. Uh, and, and so even if, let's say, hypothetically, I'm not saying this is what will happen, but hypothetically, if we end up not being able to add all the African animals here before we move on to our next zoo, um, we can still come back here and add those animals and maintain the Elite Zoo North theme as we go ahead and do that. Uh, it was suggested, I saw a great suggestion in the comments, that what we do is when we open the new zoo up, we actually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a date time. I, I normally hate uh, changing time of day and stuff, but uh, I'm going to make a date time so that, I was thinking I'm in sandbox mode here for some reason, uh, so that hopefully we can, as soon as the rain goes away, we can dive into a time lapse because I do have a lot to get done in our time lapse today and i want to have the time lapse as close to the beginning of the session as possible let's make it noon so the sun is directly above us um well you know as directly above us as it can get there we go and now we just have to wait for the rain to go when we unpause anyway so as i was saying so i got i saw a great suggestion in the comments totally on board with it if y'all are as well y'all let me know uh but basically it was like hey you know after you open up the next zoo how about every you know once every 25 episodes or something we come back to this one and do some work on it and i feel like that might be a cool way to approach it is to have a bit of structure where it's like okay once every x episodes don't know if it's going to be 25 but i like the structure of it right once every you know 10 episodes 20 episodes whatever we come back to this zoo and work on it for maybe a couple sessions or one session or, or what have you so something to think about there uh so yeah it's not don't don't fear abandonment we will be coming back to our baby over here uh to investigate to look at all the animals to make sure upgrades are still happening and whatnot and uh, on top of that i've started receiving some excellent suggestions as to what the theme for the next zoo should be uh so many fantastic suggestions in fact that i'm gonna have a hard time picking uh, what I'm probably going to do as a result of that is fine-tune the suggestions. Uh, I'll limit them based on what I think has the most uh, longevity to it. Now, that's not taking a dig at any of the ideas that are being suggested, but more a judgment on my own self. Obviously, I want to make sure that uh, it's an idea that I can execute to its fullest. I want to make sure it's an idea that can uh, get the most out of me, and I can get the most out of the idea in the sense of, multiple ways of executing it like for example our regional divisions um you know that's something that from the beginning i knew i'd be able to uh get a lot of variety out of and i think it's made for some fun viewing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to eventually not yet it's too early for it but i just want to talk about it because it was on my mind um i'm going to take the ideas that have been suggested 
I'm going to whittle them down to the ones that I think uh, have the most legs, I suppose. You know, like the most we can do with them. And I might actually throw it up for a poll. Unless one idea comes up that is, you know, by and large the biggest, most obvious choice, I think that's the path I'm going to take. But one last thing to touch on before we hit play and try to get rid of the rain. Uh, this is the big one. This is a really big one. And I, I'm very curious to hear what y'all think. I saw a couple people mention this in the comments. So Elite Zoo North, with its adorable bunny rabbit shape. I, I'll never unsee it. Um, okay, how do I how do I go about this? So, if you look at all the animals we have, and you take a look at Zoopedia briefly, right? All the animals we have have so far largely been. I, I'm just doing a quick double check as I flip through over here. I'm pretty sure it's not just largely, but it's almost certainly across the board, minus a couple of animals. Some of you might already realize where I'm going with this. Some of you might already be like, oh, I see what he's saying. And again, this is based off of some suggestions that were in the um, in the comments, and I've, I'm drawn to it because I feel like we can make it work, and it might be an interesting next step. This, so right now, this is in my head what maybe the next step, what the next zoo should be, because it's kind of what we've talked about previously already. I'm just doing a quick double check over here, if you don't mind, to see if it would be viable. I think it would be. Yeah, I think it would be. So the uh, the suggestion, and I I I like it for quite a few reasons. Uh, the suggestion was that the next zoo be Elite Zoo South, um, and the idea for that would be that our Elite Zoo North over here has been, by and large, okay, yeah, I think we could do it. This was my big question mark. So, okay. The equator lands roughly along here, right? More or less, I'm like, I wish this map had a line to tell you where the equator was. I'm pretty sure it's like around here, right? Just, just just in this little gulf area, right? Am I am I horribly mistaken? Anyway, point being, the plan is that um, if this is Elite Zoo North, then it is Elite Zoo North because all the animals we have are from above the equator. I was like, yeah, if the equator, yeah, I believe it's right in this where this this gulf is, right? So if the equator is there, including the saltwater crocodile, that's the north and south. Again, we kind of have gone with the uh, Australian theme thing, uh, Australian theme angle, uh, but it is still an animal from both sides of the equator. Um, almost, I think all of our animals are either shared or northern hemisphere only. So what we could do is we could get all the African and South American animals that are also Northern Hemisphere in this zoo. And then Elite Zoo South would be all the other animals, which are from the Southern Hemisphere. Um, what we could do is we could do a little bit of cross-featuring. So, for example, the saltwater crocodile would be in both zoos because they kind of traverse that line. Um, but, like, you know, the African elephant obviously is on both sides as well. The wild dog is on both sides, but then the Aldabra giant tortoise is only on the southern hemisphere. Um, I feel like I feel like there's a real opportunity there. The Baird's tapir is northern hemisphere, right? Black wildebeest southern, boa constrictor both. Uh, the bongo is both as well. We'd have to like split, try and figure out how we want to split it. I believe the Bornean orangutan is both, because doesn't the, the equator kind of cut right through that island there? Uh, I believe it does. I don't know. It's it's. I'm not saying it's exactly. I'm not saying it is what we're going to do, but I thought it was an interesting way of dividing which African animals we do in Elite Zoo North versus which ones we do in Elite Zoo South. If that's the next one we do, anyway. Sorry. I'm getting way ahead of myself. We still have many episodes before we get there, but I wanted to throw it out there because I'm really curious about how y'all feel about that idea. So Elite Zoo North is a primarily Northern Hemisphere Zoo. Elite Zoo South, which would probably be either in South America or somewhere in Africa, maybe 
in like a tropical zone in Africa or something. That would largely be southern hemisphere animals. That way we cover with two zoos. We have our mother zoo and our father zoo, if you will. We have elite zoo north, elite zoo south. Uh, they will both follow, again, let's figure this out, right? They'll both follow this kind of a template where it's a regional conversation. So it's like we can continue this kind of cultural path we've been going on with like cultural inspiration and whatnot. Um, and that way we have a pair of parent zoos and then we move forward with other more complicated uh or not necessarily more complicated but other different types of themes and whatnot <laughs> i wouldn't call this an uncomplicated theme uh and that also gives us some room for some african and south american animals over here it's not like we're abandoning those uh animals completely like if we take a look at moment of truth here the west african lion does make its way above the equator as well so we could get lions in this zoo uh the giraffe i feel like it's like just on that line we'd have to be picky right we'd have to be picky anyway sorry I, I keep talking about this i should stop um but you get what i'm getting at right let's go ahead and hit play see what the ai does see how things progress see what kind of warnings we see and what is easy to solve but uh hopefully again we're not in a rush to come up with a plan right now there's still at least until episode 100 uh but i would like to very much get the get the thought out there because i did like the idea I liked it so much that I rambled about it for the last 10 minutes, so I'm sorry. My apologies. Um, I think this just needs to refresh the, um, the navigation net over here. Um, come on now. Get that welfare up. But yeah, I, I, uh, I just wanted to get the thought out there because I wanted to hear, I wanted to see what people had to say about that because it's it's currently what I'm kind of drawn towards because I, 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 I really like the theme that we have over here, not not so that I can do it for every single zoo I ever have, but because I feel like um, Africa and South America are going to get the short end of the stick. If everybody here, all the all the countries and cultures and nations and continents that we've represented so far have had a time to have their cultures really explored in this way, and then all of a sudden South America and Africa just don't, that felt kind of, I don't know, I felt kind of felt unfair, you know? <laughs> There's so much to explore in these massive continents uh, that we that we haven't had a chance to explore, so my that's my two cents. Uh, okay, promise. This is the last time I say, let me know what you think about it. Okay, that's it. We're done. We're done talking about that. We'll come back to it when we're closer to episode 100, which is currently feeling like when we're going to do the launch of the new zoo. Uh, that is also not set in stone, but as we get closer to the time, I will uh, I'll bring it up again. Okay, all right. Now, hopefully I haven't lost too many of you. <laughs> God, I, I, I went on for too long there. Looking like we're having another baby over here, a grizzly bear baby. Oh, are you standing on your hind leg? <gasps> <laughs> oh, so glad I came here right on time. Uh, I didn't want to move the camera because uh, I was worried that it would, like, shake around and we'd lose sight or this menu would pop up and we'd lose sight. That was adorable, doing a little dance back there against the rubbing pillar. Oh my god, so much fun. God, I love animals. <laughs> I really want to go to a zoo. I really want to go to the zoo. Okay, looks like pretty good crowds coming through. We haven't had... You know what? I need to check one thing. Is uh, If we check our settings real quick, I've changed the number of guests we can see to 4,500. But yeah, for some reason, it's kind of capped at like 8K. It was pointed out either last session or a couple sessions ago. I wonder if we lower this a bit further, if it'll make it even smoother. Um, it was pointed out a couple sessions ago that it seems capped at like 8k or so, which is unfortunate because we do have this challenge here uh, to get at least 9.5k. So we'll, we'll see what we can do about that. I want to mention also, by the way, uh, some of y'all mention every once in a while that I should add another guest entrance up north over here or something so that we can have more guests spawn in to some of these areas that are not often getting crowds. That is not an option in uh, franchise mode. That's only in sandbox mode. So unfortunately, that's not something I can do. Uh, I cannot build another spawning point for our uh, guests to come in through. Uh, and apart from that, it was suggested a couple times as well now that I make our hot spring over here feel a bit colder outside of the bath itself. And I like the idea. I think it would look quite beautiful if we have it covered in snow. Let's try and do that, shall we? If I'm not mistaken, the animals are very comfortable. They do have a lot of fur. I can find these animals. Oh, they're oh, so nice to see the crowds coming through. 
Uh, where is my Zoopedia? Da, 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 da. There we go. If we take a look at your temperature concerns, negative 15. Yeah, I can get pretty cold over here. Why are you just standing out in the rain, man? Yeah, step in. Makako Taka, oh my god. I, I love taking name suggestions from you guys. It's always so, so fun. <laughs> in fact, spotted a protester. We have protesters and the game decides to not tell me with a red alert. Is that Does that make any sense? Why? Facility inaccessible, when did that happen? You should be accessible, you should be fine. Down over here. Alright, where are these protesters? Um... This should be a red alert. They're upset about the red pandas. Why are the red pandas not doing well? Why are you stuck here? Space is a problem. Did they change the climbing again? Get you down over here. Come on, seriously? If I get rid of this tree, if I move it... Maybe that'll do the trick. Maybe that'll do the trick. Come on, I need this problem solved. Coming down this way. There we go. Yeah, it was the tree that was blocking their access. We've had that tree there for quote unquote ever. But hey, it's fine. It's fixed now. That's all that matters. I still want to see them playing up at the trebuchet. Maybe, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Is this tree ugly now? I mean, it's. You know, I don't mind actually it being by their like feeding area. It feels like. It feels intentional. It feels like they're supposed to eat in, under the, the eat under the tree cover there. So that's fine. All right, cool. That should get the protesters gone. Uh, now, yeah, so uh, actually on the topic of name suggestions, as I was giggling at those name suggestions, I did receive a bunch for the reindeer stalls and a bunch of reminders as well for the previous names that I'd lost from my note-taking. So let's go ahead and see over here. We've got our Hoofinit. We've got Ungolate, our Information Center. I actually got a lot of suggestions for the Information Center. All right, you know what? For the information center, I'm going to throw up a vote because I, I can't pick between these. Uh, we've got rain check because, well, reindeer and uh, umbrellas. And also it's raining right now, so that's kind of drawing me right now. Uh, you have no idea because that is that is another way I've heard idea pronounced a lot. You have no idea. Idea. I love it. Um, and then we've got have you heard. Again, these are info centers, so... Jeez. <laughs> so give me one of those picks. Uh, top right corner, under the eye, you should be able to vote. Let's get this uh, spot named, shall we? And then over here, the Looney Balloons is going to be called... Where to go? There we go. Bl blown away. I hope our guests are all blown away. Um, and then I've got a couple name suggestions for uh, some more additions that we will hopefully be making very soon. This rain is persistent. And incessant. We can't stop the rain. I can change the time of day, but I can't change the weather. Feels like night's gonna set by the time this rain is gone. In game and in real life. Uh, snow. Got a little bit of snow down over here. Want to make sure the animals aren't gonna be unhappy about it. Because when it's not snowing, it's stone. Or rock, or whatever the game calls it. Sorry. You. Rain. Oh, oh, yeah, they actually want a lot more snow. Hang on a second. How did I miss that? How did I miss that? Um, God, that was pointed out to me. Go ahead and sort this out. Everything else can be reduced significantly. Snow needs to be increased significantly. All right, great. But we shall do exactly that. Cool. I was That was my concern because I vaguely, and I suppose incorrectly, remember having done this properly, but I guess I hadn't. There we go. Red pandas continue to mature. We should definitely get them, um, get some of them out of the zoo. Waiting too long on that, I think. I need to get some more coolers down as well, otherwise the snow is just going to be rocks. Alright, let's get our next cooler 
duplicate you. Negative three is fine, I think. Get you down over here. Okay, let's get another one down on these rocks over here. You keep this place cool. And let's get another one down over here. Chloe is about to pass away. If you don't like seeing animals pass, then now is the time to avert your eyes. I like being there for at least our doggos. I can't add. I love dogs. Um, I've always wanted a pet dog. The closest I've had to having a pet dog is my upstairs neighbors. Many, 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 many years ago having a pet dog. Uh, I can't not watch. Cannot be there for him. Sad, but... <laughs> well, there's Chloe. Uh, you can now stop averting your eyes because we have moved away. Cool. I was asked to, to mention that and uh, I totally appreciate some people do not like watching it, so that's perfectly fair. Let's go ahead and get back to business over here. The sun's up, so we're going to pause. But I do want to finish this off before we get into our time lapse because otherwise I'm going to have another half-finished thing that I'll notice 10 episodes from now. I'll be like, oh hey, right, I forgot to do this thing. <laughs> Got to finish doing this thing, rather. There we go. Let's snow it up over here. I think that'll be quite pretty to look at. I wish the um, snowy rocks were a bit nicer. They're not my favorite rock type, I'll be honest. Um, I wonder if we could just cover this whole, all the entire like mountain range in snow as well. The tops we can do, obviously. Because right, we've got the, uh, the coolers up here already. We can do that. Might need another cooler back there. Not a problem. Get you over here. Good bit of coverage there. Good stuff, good stuff. Get you up over here as well. There we go. That'll be good down over here. Again, I wish like when it when it does snow, it's gonna look great because we're gonna have like everything snow covered. I wish there was an option to like check a box or something and be like, yeah, make this snow covered. It would be artificial snow, but, you know, it's snow covered. Uh, if you take a look at the rocks that we have available, I'm going to take a look at the snow ones. See, unfortunately, they don't quite, I don't, I don't quite buy it. You know what I mean? Like, I guess I could do, what I could do is this sort of a thing, where we add a layer of snow atop of the rock our own selves. But what we need, what we need, I would say, is a model much like the, um, the mossy rock except have it be snow so whatever side is facing up has snow on it again i think i mentioned this a couple sessions ago but the first one of the first ever complicated shaders i built in a game engine i think it was unreal engine uh because i wanted to get into developing video games way back in the day um one of the first shaders one of the first complicated shaders i built was something like that where like snow would appear at the top of any model it would figure out which way is facing up and it would just put snow down on it. <laughs> or we could do it ourselves like this. I mean, it's a it's a painstaking process. Making sure that it looks right. But you know what? It does look quite nice. Oh, damn. This might be a whole other thing I invest a whole lot of time in. Oh, this is, this is a dangerous discovery. This is a dangerous realization. Because, like... This, I think at least, and y'all let me know, maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, then hey, that's great because <laughs> I won't incessantly spend four hours per rock we put down in snowy places. But like this, you know, this is, I, I buy this, right? I buy this. Oh, damn. I think I really like how that looks actually. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, let's see how it looks over here. Because what we can do is, uh, it's got to keep the edges clear, right? So it looks like it's a th it's a thick, rather, layer of snow laying on top. This will actually come in handy for what we're about to do as well. For today's time lapse, this will come in handy, this discovery. Um, let's go ahead and see how this looks over here. Inside the actual more complicated parts of the enclosure. Lower this a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. God, it's feeling pretty good. That's feeling pretty good. Yo. Right? That looks legit. That looks legit. Okay. That's great. I mean, like I said, it's going to come in handy for the time lapse I have planned today. The time lapse that I think I'm about to uh, hop on into because otherwise I'll, it'll never get started and it'll be 
Oh my god, it's already halfway through the episode today. <laughs> or halfway through the planned time of the episode, I should say. God knows how long this episode's actually gonna end up being. Uh, just wanna nudge this one into place, folks. Bear with me for a moment as I monkey around. There we go. Done. Done. Oh, I see, and yeah, it's like that That part's deeper because the rocks go down. Oh no, this is really good. I like this. I think it looks pretty neat. All right, one more. One more spot. One more spot to experiment with. Just gotta make sure the idea works before I, you know, run with it, right? I put this one over here, let's say. How does this look? Got like a little thin layer like this. A little bit of exposed uh, spots of the rock underneath makes sense as well, right? Where like it got a little warm or whatever. And if we go a little bit messier with the placement as well, I think it still works. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's great. I, I think so, at least. Maybe I'm horribly wrong. Maybe I'm too sleep deprived to realize how bad it is, but I think that looks pretty damn good. That's, 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 I like it. Alright, folks, with that done, I'm finally gonna force myself over because otherwise I'll keep putting snow rocks down. Uh, let's work over here, right? Our time lapse is focused on, uh, river run, if you will. Wolf walk, as some of you have, uh, have suggested. We do need a name for this enclosure. I don't know if I want any more A Song of Ice and Fire references, because, uh, I mean, we, we, we did that for our, you know, China section. Uh, let's, let's keep it to the China section, maybe. Why is our China section themed with A Song of Ice and Fire names? I do not know, but it is. And you know what? Let's embrace it, because they're, they're hilarious and they're amazing. <laughs> I'm not complaining, but, uh, and this might just end up being called River Run or some variant of it. But uh, open for name suggestions, of course, folks. Leave them in the comments down below. But obviously, there's nothing to name here just quite yet. So uh, it's time for me to get to work, folks. It's time lapse time. All right, folks. This one is a pretty interesting one. But uh, they're all interesting, aren't they? Um, <laughs> sorry. I, uh, I, I spend... Far too much time in the opening of this uh, of this time lapse, actually dealing with the um, tiger enclosure. I'm going to be perfectly honest, um, and as a result of that, I get less time on the uh, the uh, Arctic wolf enclosure. I keep wanting to say Arctic fox. Uh, my apologies. Um, and, and and that's fine. Ultimately, we do accomplish as much as I wanted to accomplish, but I definitely felt uh, pressed for time while trying to build the. Uh, uh, the, the wolf enclosure. I should have just been Arctic Foxes, man. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how things turn out overall at the end of this, uh, time lapse. Again, we, it's a big project. The, the entirety of this path is rather long, and it's also a strange project. It's not anything like we've done before in its shape or structure or, uh, interactive, um, elements, I suppose, like the viewing angles and stuff. Uh, so it was a bit of a, uh, I don't want to call it challenge. Um, but there were a lot of things to take into consideration uh, while building it. So it, it was kind of slow-ish going, I would say, but fortunately we have the, uh, we have movie magic to speed it up for us over here. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with the end result though. And we do take it about, I would say, 70% of the way, 75% of the way today. Uh, then we get the animal in to see if the animal likes the space and see what adjustments are required And I'm definitely glad I did that you'll obviously see why later uh, and then next session We're going to do a beauty pass in this area, but also complete that enclosure We're going to try and do both of those things in one go uh, And I, I think that's very much what was required of this uh, Of this session over here to make sure we get uh, good success I did do a quick check over there to see if guests were coming through and they are no donations yet uh, but hopefully that'll change soon. Hopefully once we complete this massive, it is a big loop, but once we complete it, uh, hopefully we'll see some success. But finally, uh, what, I, I want to say like halfway into the time lapse, we're dealing with what we were supposed to be dealing with. And even then, not really. We're just doing pathing still. Um, but I wanted to make sure I got all this stuff nailed absolutely right before I got too deep into the project and then couldn't go, couldn't like back out and fix any issues or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, so we, we shifted the path over a little bit uh, closer to the polar bears because we want to again make sure that people are able to use this as an alternative view for the polar bears. Uh, maybe a better view, maybe a view to or a view of where, uh, rather, of yeah, a view of the places that are obscured from the uh, workshop, from like Santa's workshop, right? 
And it's so funny that we have like a Christmas themed thing in the middle, fully surrounded by all these much more like very old, like Christmas isn't a new thing, maybe in its, you know, current rendition, but you know what I'm getting at, right? As far as uh, our, our, our perception of how old these things are. Um, I just find it kind of funny, but uh, anyway, that's besides the point. Um, next step is to actually get this ride in. I want to get the gondola in. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm kind of bummed by how there's only one look that the gondola has, and it's not really generic enough. Like the boat is a pretty generic looking ride. The steam train, thanks to you know world history, is a pretty generic looking ride. But this gondola stands out a lot. It is such a distinct look um it's so like sci-fi futuristic so that's a little unfortunate but it's the only option we have and i do think it's the best option for the space we're creating again uh to connect the um the the russian uh village that we're gonna have on this side the russian i don't know ski village i suppose it'll be <laughs> or something that we're gonna have on this side with the uh uh the you know korean themed opening of the enclosure because you get over the wall technically you're you're in this enclosure space and then you you take the uh either you walk across it or you take the ride across it either way i don't mind if guests aren't walking too much uh i do hope they do uh, but if they don't then i do have this viewing platform over here as well from where they'll be able to see the animals it's going to be a challenging enclosure to get results out of simply because of uh again the size of it the animal might not typically be where i've put viewing platforms so that's another thing i have to consider is like maybe we wait and see how the animal behaves uh and try and put some viewing platforms down where the animal is likely to stay and also of course we're going to use whatever influence we can by placing their food trays and their water well <laughs> they're going to drink water from the river and the little lake at the end of it uh, but the food at least we can use the food and the enrichment we can use to kind of drive those wolves from place to place um i'm really hoping that uh just doing some checking over here to find the closest uh, spot for our keeper huts and things like that. Uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that um, guests don't just use the gondola. I do want them to walk. I hope they use that as a viewing angle for the polar bears. Like if they come up to the Siberian tiger uh, and then they go, I want to check out the polar bear. Then I hope they go around this bend, maybe check out the doll sheep and then loop back either through the reindeers or loop back through uh aurora borealis to head towards you know santa's workshop and whatnot i don't know there's there's many ways this opens up a lot of options and i'm curious to see if the guests actually perceive those options and if they actually use those options and whatnot but uh well i mean we'll see time will tell right uh, i decided to put some coolers down as well i want to make this place as snowy as possible might have a couple of zones where it's a little lush and green where like the trees are coming through uh but we are putting down a handful of coolers right by the uh entrance i'll call it and then coming to work on the waterfall area i don't do any of the vfx today i want to do the vfx as the finishing touch uh but we're gonna add we're gonna add a bunch of vfx we're gonna make it look like uh you know an intense waterfall again it's the uh the the, the mountains upon which the doll sheep are uh you know living i guess those mountains are melting away like their their snow caps are melting away to create this waterfall so i want to have that intensity uh, i want to have some good rapids and stuff as the water flows down the river i want to introduce good splashing by like this fallen tree or these rocks I'm trying to introduce some hard edges where we can really have a lot of fun with those visual effects because i think that's going to be essential uh for this enclosure like some of the other enclosures we put in waterfalls because it's like ah that's nice like the the uh Funnily enough, like our uh, original wolves, so the you know, like uh, Wolf Rock, the the waterfall there is completely unnecessary, but it's nice. Um, even at you know the Eagle Eye um, with the Yanasi Plains, the waterfall there completely unnecessary. But here, the waterfall is not just about like serenity or anything, but it is the waterfall and the rapids and everything. They are a core part of the entire enclosure because of what they're supposed to represent, right? What this what the enclosure is supposed to represent. So uh, really, will go pretty pretty hefty on those i wish vfx played when you're paused or there was like a vfx preview mode um so you could kind of see them but i i, I totally understand why the devs didn't do that it, it's hard to predict you know how many different ways people are going to be using your uh tools so you, you can't you can't build for everything because that's how you get a game that never releases um but uh 
overall very happy with the structure overall very happy with the shape over here happy with some of these like fallen trees and stuff as well i feel like my biggest concern i guess was i wouldn't i didn't know how to embellish the space uh, i like the shape of it i like the idea of it but that's not good enough it needs to have color it needs to have vegetation and all that kind of stuff right so just trying to sort all that out now over here you'll see i add a bunch of trees which actually the animals might not like and i don't think i end up checking that this session i'll need to check next session but i i, I put in a bunch of trees because what i'd like to try and do is blend the shrine area with this you know massive backyard if you will i want it to look like if when you're looking at it from up top i want it to look like it is one giant connected space i want it to be uh, believable that these Siberian tigers would potentially or could potentially go from the shrine into this wooded area uh, and that there just happened to be wolves there. Uh, to execute that I think I need the trees to help cover up some of the uh, pathing and whatnot so that it looks like a uh, smooth transition and I have to do that on both sides of the wall. I've just done it on one side today because that's where the time lapse is supposed to be focused uh, but I do need to do some on the other side as well. I think that'll make it a much more a smooth transition. Uh, you can see I also toyed around with putting some rocks down to help make the edge steep, but then I was like, you know, I don't know what's actually going to work and what's not going to work, so we'll save that for later. I also didn't quite like how it was looking, so we'll save that for later for that reason as well. And over here, just trying to get the um, the staff entrance in, I uh, decided to move my little stone construct there, putting it down I still want it. I want to see if the wolves will climb up top, and then it's time to put the barrier down. And for the most part, uh, we we're able to use nulls, but at the beginning over here, and what also ends up being the end, uh, we use the steel mesh barrier because uh, it's hidden by the trees anyway, so I think it's fair, I think it's fitting, I think it looks right because you barely see it. Everything else is a null though, and we'll you know use steep terrain and things like that. But once we close this off, and it's actually not much of a struggle, probably the easiest time I've had with uh, the barrier construction, we can go back into regular speed and see how the animals feel before we resume the time lapse next time. All right, folks, we are back after what felt like the most, uh, in many ways, challenging time lapse. I mean, such a large canvas to play with, such a strange shaped canvas to play with, I would say. Uh, I really wanted to hold on a second. This is not. Uh, wow. How do I notice this right now? Let's see if we can't fix this immediately. If not, then I'll leave it for later. This just needs to be slightly adjusted over here, just ever so slightly. No, that doesn't quite do the trick, does it? I might, I might come back in later and and relay, relay this area out a little bit because it's um perfect, not perfect, and I don't think I can make it perfect very easily. It wants to do this weird wibbly, wiggly, woggly thing that doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, I can always delete it like that, and then and then do something like this, right, and then build that, and then, then and then. And then then delete this and change this to be a bit more like so right and then we can do that and then we can maybe maybe no no we, we can't we can't do it like this let's delete that i can't connect you can i no all right fine let's go ahead and undo all that i'll come back some other time and, and do this properly <laughs> just because you can see how like slightly off it is and as you can imagine that's absolutely killing me that's absolutely killing me. Anyway, um, that's fine. It's all good. No big deal. What is the problem over here, though? Ride has one or more issues. Uh, well, it's not a loop. In fact, it is going to be a shuttle. That should hopefully solve the problem. We were having power issues earlier, strangely enough. Even though everything is within a power radius. Yeah, we're good. Let's see if it's been fixed automatically. I might need to just hit play on it or something. Don't, uh... I'll do this to me. Because the track is connected now. Fine earlier. We'll see. I mean, the other option is maybe moving it and then undoing that. It seemed to work the last time it was giving me a problem during the time lapse. No, it still has a problem. All right, well, we'll, we'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later, folks. Right now, I want to get the uh, animals in here. But yeah, this was, this was strange. Because it was such a strange shape. And it's such a strange length. And there's so many strange features. And when I say strange, I just mean like strange to me in the sense that uh, we haven't really played with things like this before. Uh, but I am, again, working on it, reinvigorated my uh, my excitement for it. I was, I was already at 100% excited for this enclosure. And uh, now I'm at 
200%. I'm at 200% excitement uh, just to see how the animals run around. But let's go ahead and get those animals coming through. Again, it's the Arctic Wolves. I also tried to blend things in a little bit so it doesn't feel like such a hard break from uh, from here to here. And once we add some more beautification uh, on this side of the enclosure, I feel like it'll blend in a bit more nicely so that this feels like a natural extension to the uh, to the Siberian Tiger enclosure. But in reality, it is the Arctic Wolf enclosure. I keep wanting to say Arctic Fox. It's a shame that the Arctic Foxes aren't in this game. Arctic Foxes are super adorable. Super adorable. Uh, let's take a look at animal, not animal storage, sorry. So, wonder if we could throw some of y'all up for trade again. We have so many. So many 22 animals. It's okay. Okay, we'll do, we'll do the litter. I need to stop getting distracted today. Uh, where are my Arctic wolves? Not to say Arctic wolves aren't cute as well. I mean, they're, you know, doggos. And look at that. How do you say no to that, right? 1,500 conservation credits over here. I'm going to go ahead and assume that's the best option. I can't even click on any of the others. Come on. Come on. There we go. I want to do a quick check over here. Yeah, it seems like this is the way to go. Let's adopt you from Hawkins Zoo. Go ahead and move you right into a quarantine building back over here. Come on now. There we go. I was trying to decide which end to put the uh, keeper gate on because you can only have one. And I think this is the closer option to the, uh, to the uh, well, not just to the entrance, but to the area in general. Because the other one is down over here. I, I guess they might actually be equidistant. The other one's over here versus over here. I don't know. Hopefully this was the right call, but that quarantine shouldn't take too long and then we're gonna have The animal brought up this way delivered over here and obviously this enclosure is nowhere near done There's still a lot more work to be done to it But I wanted to get the animal in see how it likes the space before we get there also It's boxing day. I just realized it's on the 26th of December. Just thought I'd point that out. Uh, I think we're good to unpause and Let time move forward um, And then we can get the animal in here, right? I believe so Yes just like jogging my mind to see if there was anything that I'd uh, missed out on. A couple stressed animals, a hungry, hungry panda. Fine. Lots of people to say hello to, but it's, it's, it is wild. If there's one thing that's a testament to the size of our zoo, um, it is the fact that I haven't been able to say hello to guests in the longest time. Seems like the game was recalculating the pathing still. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save the zoo because it's good to be risk averse sometimes. <laughs> I can be a bit of a risk taker, but not when there's potential for a couple hours of work to go down the drain. <laughs> there we go. Cool. I do want to see also like people coming through dangerous animals fighting for alpha status. Why is that dangerous? Isn't fighting for alpha status completely natural and uh, acceptable? Hmm. I would assume so. No, 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 not 100% sure. Um, I don't mind them determining their own alphas. Oh yeah, look at the, the abandoned path there. The weird ghost path. I do want to keep an eye on this section as well. I want to see if guests are coming through. Oh, we are. Yeah, we are getting some guests. Again, we should hopefully get more now, right? You like the steam train? Good for you. Donations here just quite yet. Uh, one other thing that was suggested was to maybe make the sign here a really dark green as opposed to black. I might experiment with that. Um, let's see if I edit the group, select everything except for the parentheses, just the one. Come on now. Work with me, game. I don't want to pause right now. Pausing would make selection a lot easier. I wouldn't have the frame rate to do. Oh no, yeah, that's actually not too bad. Not too shabby. All right, good stuff, good stuff. Dun, 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 dun. Nope. <laughs> Come on now. There we go. Beautiful. But like a super dark green. Just so it has a bit of, like, texture and dimension to it. Totally on board with that suggestion. I think that's good. I think that's a good balance between what we had and, uh, and, a, and a bit of a more green selection. That's one side done. Flip on over to the other there we go. All this while the animals are, you know, dealing with the whole quarantine thing. All right, here we go. Come on now. There we go. Beautiful. Dangerous animal has escaped. Don't, don't be the orangutan. 
Just don't be the orangutan. Be anything else. Anything else that I've like not noticed. Did I? That's frustrating. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. Used to be so much faster. There we go. Alright, what's going on here? It is a Siberian tiger that's escaped. Where have you escaped? Oh, hello. Seems as though you were able to somehow get through the fencing as well as the wall. Don't quite understand. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it had to do with a tree. You managed to climb over. Where's our other tiger? I, I had a feeling something like this would happen when I put the trees down. Um, I wasn't sure it would happen, but I wouldn't. I was not surprised that it happened. No, it looks like that was just some strange silliness. Okay. Protesters have arrived. Protesting Anya. What's wrong with Anya over here? Why is why are you upset? Are you upset because you're stuck in a hedge? I didn't put you there. Why are you stuck in a hedge? Can't even select the animal. Alright, that's not fun. What's these menus? Oh my god, these crowds. These crowds. Or are you, Anya? What seems to be the problem here? I feel like she's actually, yeah, just kind of stuck. Like, clipped through the geometry and then got stuck. And so wasn't able to, what, eat, maybe? Or do anything, really. Stressing up because of space. Yeah, she got stuck in the hedge. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Why, why would you clip through geometry and whatever? It's fine. It's not the end of the world. We solve the problem. We have issues up over here as well. Habitat. Temperature. Really? Temperature issues. Quarantine passed. Dangerous animals escaped. Ow. There's no gaps here. Doesn't go the trees as an option or anything. What? What's going on? What's going on? All right, hang on. I can't prepare for their escapes if the game won't tell me how they're going to escape. Or that they're going to escape, even. Barry goes all the way. Should be blocked perfectly by this wall. It is a solid wall. We do not have any holes in it, right? It didn't leave any gaps or anything. I could try to maybe push this terrain back a little bit. Like that. I could try to pull this terrain up a little bit. Yeah, that'll close it off. This this should not be a problem. They, they can't climb the trees. It would have highlighted that if that was the case. Hopefully this solves it. Um, can't even remember what I was checking for. I was trying to deal with something else before that happened. We'll see. I mean, at least it doesn't fade into the wall now, so hopefully that solves the problem. But unfortunately, we had to do it. Let's go ahead and get our Arctic Wolf. Oh, right, our reindeer. But it looks like they're fine now. Otherwise, we'd have the alert over there, right? Over to Habitat 32, which again needs a name still. We'll come here shortly, and I actually need to go ahead and take a look at staff, work zones, and our Arctic work zone needs to add our new enclosure, not just our new enclosure, but also our new um, rides, right? Why is this enclosure not shown 
as they fall. Oop. I've got one. I don't know. Game's tripping out. <laughs> Game's starting to trip out on me. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. What are we looking at here? Reindeer issues still? No. Dangerous fighting for alpha status. Oh, for, for overcrowding, that is a problem. Let's go ahead and deal with that real quick. Let's just get our... Pronghorn Antelope. Got a couple of older ladies here. Let's go ahead and get rid of William, I suppose. Move to the Trade Center. Wakefield still has some time left in him. He's hungry. Watch as I zoom in, he's going to escape as well. Ah, food's being delivered right now. Yeah, it looks like he's eating. There we go. Problem solved. All right, that's one problem solved. You guys are still having trouble. Temperature. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Uh, let's take a look at Zoopedia. Their ideal temperature is negative 12 to 16. I guess it is 24 degrees right now. Get more of these coolers down. I guess it's pretty warm for them. I didn't notice that before. It's down over here as well. That should cool things off nicely for them, hopefully. Uh, Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at our new animal that has hopefully arrived by now. Oh, there we go. Are you making a beeline for an escape, or what's going on here? Come on. Can't even select the animal. Obviously, there isn't much going on in terms of a social group, or... They're so adorable. <gasps> so glad I was here for that. Oh, look at that yawn. Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> Never complain about more more uh, wolves, right? Um, I want to see really quickly. Key Nick. I, I'm not. I can't place that name. So, someone who's better informed, feel free to inform me. Looks like we have some escape potential, just because of some spots here and there with the terrain, which we can probably quickly fix. It's got to make this a little bit steeper. That'll do the trick, so let's make that a bit steeper. Over here we have a lot of uh, potential for escape. Push all that back a little bit. Hopefully we can solve this problem rather easily. Now we got to get down like feeders and water and all that kind of stuff. Come on. Brush a bit faster. Otherwise, I'm going to start modifying the train before you even update. Good stuff here. Go ahead and reduce this a little bit as well. And again, we're going to make this stuff rockier and, and whatnot as well, right? Come on. It's only a matter of time before an escape happens. Alright, we're good there. This side's a bit of a problem still. What's letting you get up there? Uh, a little bit of rain work needed here, I suppose. Like that. that should clear at least some stuff up. It's a little bit of train work needed over here, okay. Not a problem. Clear this entire area up. Good stuff. That looked really good, actually. Yeah, we're clear there. Now, this is a problem still. Must have access over here. Alright, cool. What a good boy. Look, hasn't escaped yet. Supposedly programmed to uh, escape at all times. Hasn't escaped yet. The goodest boy. There we go. Problems solved. And it does look like they're able to get up over here as well, which is really nice. I was really hoping for that. Um, let's go ahead and pull this down a little bit. And maybe they'll be able to get right up top over there. Come on now. Ah, just short of it, it seems. Why? I'll lower you a bit further. Maybe then. That is not an animal. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hmm. We'll, we'll have to sort that out. We'll have to sort that out. They are able to cross the water over here and over here and over here. Excellent. Oh, did you see that jump? Oh, man. I wish I wasn't in this view for it. Overall terrain. Um, 
four times as much space as needed. That's excellent because we're going to get a full pack here, right? So that means we haven't really overdone it. Got to get rid of some of the long grass, which is also excellent because I'd like to get some more snow in, right? Um, in fact, this in the center over here should all be snow. Uh, hunt that down right now. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Long grass is on the other side, obviously. We'll, we'll have to reduce that there. Oh, look at that jump. That's so beautiful. <sighs> Got some grass up over here as well that I think we'll have to turn to snow. Yep. Get more easily done when paused. But we'll uh, we'll 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 finesse the terrain a little bit, have a little bit of exposed soil and stuff as well. It's feeling pretty good though. Like I like how it looks when like the top here is snowy, but the side has a bit of like dirt and rock on it. But this will get rid of all the grass issue. Good stuff. Hard shelter is really low. I do need to build them a hard shelter. I'm trying to figure out where I want the hard shelter to be. If I want it to be on the Asia side or if I want it to be on the um, on the, uh, the the Russia side, so to speak. Are we going to make another jump? Are we going to make another jump? Let me see if I can catch it. Come on. Oh, do the jump. Do the jump. Do the jump. No, you're going to just walk through the water, aren't you? Of course, because I'm watching this time. Oh, you're not even going to do that. <laughs> Why would you? So cute though. Oh, they're so cute. I just can't. What a beauty. What a beauty. Look at those eyes as well, eh? Look at those eyes. Next to the trees back there. Something about that color just uh, working beautifully. Come on, get rid of the tools there. Really happy with this. Really pleased with this. <laughs> Very derpy face there for a second. Of course, he's taking a dip in the water. And stay wet for too long in climates like this, right? They're so majestic looking. I say that as he licks his nose. <laughs> you know what, folks? I think this is where we call it a session. They have, uh, their faces... I'm trying to figure out, there's something different about, there's something not off, but different about their faces, isn't there? Just the structure of, uh, of the muzzle and stuff. Muzzle? Yeah, there's something up here. It looks different than uh, than the typical wolf. Anywho, folks, this is where we're gonna call it a session. Uh, it's a it's it's a longer build. It's part way done. Still, it's about halfway done, almost literally. Uh, still about got to take care of all this stuff over here. Uh, I got to stylize the rocks and stuff. Make the the rocks, you know, the snowy alternative version that we're uh, we're uh, experimenting with over at the macaque section. So definitely glad I happened upon that before diving into this because that's definitely, um, definitely something I want to, uh, I want to implement over here. So cute. <laughs> Folks, I hope you enjoyed this session. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Always makes a massive difference in how I approach things on the channel. A big old thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting this channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.